wake me? I saw you just gone seven. I was going to bring you breakfast in bed. Oh, no, nothing for me, thanks. I'm late enough as it is. I should have gone back last night. I don't even know closed up or anything. Oh, God, look at the state of me. Listen, I think they'll probably have survived without you for one night. Besides, I think you look very attractive in the morning, so I do. Did Andy come back? No, he didn't. I expect he stayed the night with Amy. Uh, listen, can I get you a cup of coffee at least? Uh, no, Jim, honestly. So, I suppose I'll see you later then? Yeah, I suppose. Well, will I or will I not? We have just spent the night together, Liz. We need to talk, don't we? I'd rather just take one thing at a time, if you don't mind. Right now, I just need to get back. OK, sorry, I didn't mean to push you. No. Let's just take it gently, eh? I'll speak to you soon. Whatever you say. I hope that's the kind that melts in your mouth, not in your hand. 17 Jubilee Terrace. You were on the phone yesterday morning complaining because there were chocolate all over at football results. That's better. Probably all over at Dagony Column. Fellas never admit to that, do they? Earth to Mavis. Oh, I'm sorry, Rita. Oh, that's all right. I get like that myself. You know, when the tannin counts low, is it time for a brew yet? Yeah, I was just musing. A country's dogs say a lot about the national character, don't they? Well, I've never given it much thought. Yeah, well, I mean, for example, take the French poodle. It's chic and well turned out, just like the French. And then there's the British bulldog. Sturdy, reliable. Then there's the Japanese Akita dog. Like Mitzi. I mean, it's inscrutable. Calm exterior, but... Who knows what deep thoughts are going on inside? Well, it's probably wondering when it can lollop about without half a dozen pups weighing it down. Oh, you can mock, Rita, but there's a lot in what I say. Listen, you get the tea and I believe out your life. Have uh, you seen that, Mavis? Don't look at me. I didn't do it. Well, it, it must have been Mitzi. I, I thought she needed a lie down when she came back from a walk last night. You mean you took her into our house and gave her my best slippers to chew? Well, they need a lot of rest, Derek. I mean, haven't you noticed it's a Japanese characteristic? That's why they're good at making cars, so they don't have to walk far. I'm not having it, Mavis. Well, it must have been her hormones. I don't care what it was. She stays out of our house in future. But it won't happen again. Look at that. It's ruined. Oh, no. It only looks ruined. But who knows what's going on, what that slipper's thinking beneath those inscrutable teeth marks. What are you burbling on about, Rita? I thought you were on my side. I am. I'm just trying to understand the situation. Otherwise, my life's intolerable. Oh, rhubarb. So how did you meet and go? You've not said a word. Not wonderful. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Why was that, then? Oh, you know. Andy and his new girlfriend, it's a bit complicated to go into. How did the new cocktail promotion go, anyway? Oh, it was all right. Some of the uh, yuppies quite liked it. it. Must have been pretty complicated for you to stay out that long. What time did you get back last night? Oh, I don't remember exactly. Late. But sorry if I put you out. No, I don't mind holding the fort, you know, especially for a family emergency. A quick phone call wouldn't have gone amiss, though, you know. Just let me know what was happening like. Yeah, it was a bit difficult. How about you, anyway? Did you try the new cocktail? Yeah, I'm an old-fashioned bitter man myself, you know. I find these uh, fancy inventions a bit rich for my liking. A bit disorientating. I prefer to know where I am. Well, that's a car washed and polished. Now, what's the next on the agenda? I don't have an agenda, thank you. No, I've got a list of things that won't do in here. Ah, oh, there they are. Check them off. <coughs> Have a look. Clean and polish cow. I can take that off. That's done. Check oil and water. Yes, that's done. We're only going to the other side of town. Yes, I know, but you've got to be prepared for any eventuality. Nobody couldn't abide anybody being late, neither can I. Oh, by the way, I've uh, planned a special route to the church to avoid bottlenecks. I don't know if it meets with your approval. Mr Sugden, this is Olive Clark's wedding. Not the North Africa campaign. We don't have to leave the house for another hour and a half. Now, the only thing on my agenda is to have a quiet cup of tea 
and then get changed. Yes, well, I prepared for all that. I thought I could be cleaning my shoes while you were in the bathroom. That way, it would save me disturbing you while you were having your lenses. Anything you say. Oh, heck, I forgot to clean the inside of the car. I best do that while I think about it. Oh, dear me. Have you any idea where the dust spanner brushes? I'm going upstairs. I'll see you later. Oh, by the way, we'd camp at uh, 12 30 hours according to the new schedule, not 12 15 hours, Mrs. Bishop. Just thought I'd mention it. <laughs> Away for good. How you doing, Bob? Sure, it's a grand day, eh? Yeah. Hi, love. You, uh,. You left this at the house this morning, so, well, I just brought her in, in case you've been needing it, you know what I mean? This is not a good time, Jim. So this is how things got complicated, is it? Was there anything else? Uh, no. No, 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 I think that's just about it. Yeah, well, I've got somewhere else. Me notice. You can find yourself another mug. This one's had enough. Uh, listen, if uh, this is inconvenient, I can come back at another time, you know what I mean? Why don't you do that? Yeah, why not? And take her back at the same time, eh? Oh, well, I think you'll find I've probably already done that, son. Hi, well, you're welcome to it. Thanks, Jim. You are officially man and wife. All the remains is a little address. So if you'd like to sit down. Oh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. One of these special joys of the ministry is to join together those who have found love in the autumn of their lives, when companionship is often most needed. Olive and Edwin will, I know, have a great deal to share in the time ahead, not least their compassion for their fellow men. Olive's years as a nurse were born of her wish to help others while Edwin was one of that rare breed during the war whose conscience prevented him from spilling the blood of his brothers. Maligned by many at the time, Edwin was in fact following one of our Lord's most precious teachings. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. In those dark hours, he was one of the few who kept this country's spiritual conscience afloat. One of this century's unsung heroic acts. For yes, bravery in battle deserves its earthly rewards. But for people like Edwin, there are far greater treasures waiting in heaven. I'm sorry I lied to you. Oh, I? I just couldn't handle it any other way this morning. I was going to tell you later. Aye, but instead I have to hear from Superglued, who comes round and tells everyone else at the same time. I didn't ask him to come round. Look, last night we had a major crisis. Oh, you don't expect us to believe that tripe, do you? We did. Oh, yeah, what, you needed a bit of consolation. My, my, how the violence must have played for you, eh? Here's my husband. Oh, well, that's what it comes down to, isn't it? Is he? In name. Stop playing games, Liz. Either he is or he isn't. Make up your mind or I'll make it up for you. You know, I'm not hanging around like some superannuated toy boy to be used when you feel like it. That isn't how I see you. No, well, it's not how it looks from where I'm standing. John, oh, what's the point? You'll never leave him, will you? Where are you going? I'm off back to Hartlepool. There is nothing for us here. I don't want you to do this. No? All right, well, I'll give you a choice. There's a bus leaves at 5.30 this afternoon. If you don't want us to catch it, you'll be there to stop us. I have to open up this place at 5.30. Yeah, well, you'd have closed it at 11 last night, but I don't recall you being here. It's up to you, Liz. I am sick and tired of messing around. If you want us, you'll be there. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Listen to that sort of an insult. But are you sure this is the right moment, Mr. Sugden? And what qualifies you to talk about war? I'm sorry? You could have only been a kid at the time. I don't think we've been introduced. Bernard Morton, Vicar of St. Saviour's. I'm not shaking hands with a man who's just been singing the praises of a conscientious objector. Uh, I think you misunderstood me, Mr... Uh... Sugden. Ex-Sergeant Sugden. All I was trying to say, Mr. Sugden, was that 50 years on, a certain balance needs to be redressed. There wouldn't have been any balance at all if the Germans had had their way, and you've got Nobby to thank for that. Sorry, Nobby? Mrs. Clark's first husband. Oh, Nobby. Yes, and he'd be turning in his grave, he'd have heard what you've just been saying. Which regiment were you with, Mr. Sutton? The Catering Corps. So you weren't actually fighting? An army fights on its stomach, but that's got now to do with it. No, of course, we all do our bit. Anything wrong, Percy? Yes, plenty, but not being one to spoil a special occasion, I'll hold my peace. I voice my feelings to the appropriate party. A bit of good day. Mr. Sugden, what were all that about? I'm afraid Edwin's war record didn't meet with Mr. Sugden's approval. Oh, that? Well, I don't think Percy's record always met with Nobby's approval, but he were too polite to mention it. <laughs> You're not going, are you? No, uh, I'll stay. Oh, good. I'll see you later, then. Yes. You must be Mrs. Sugden. Good gracious, no. I'm Mr. Sugden's landlady, Emily Bishop. Oh, I see. Pleased to meet you. Uh, perhaps I can introduce you to some of the guests. Oh, that would be nice. May I call you Emily? Why not? You OK? What? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. 5.30, by my watch. Right. Well, let's do it then, shall we? You had your tea? Do I want any? <sighs> I'm sorry if I've been a bit brisk with you lately, love. It's all right. <laughs> you know, all these rows we've been having all boils down to the fact that I've been out of work. I mean, when you're worried about money all the time, things just get blown up out of all proportion. So what are you saying? Now you've got your job back, you're going to stop going on at me. What I'm saying is, now that I'm not worried about money anymore, let's stop rowing about it, eh? I know... I know I'm not entirely blameless, but, well, let's just try and be a bit more sensitive to what the other one wants, OK? Yeah, OK. Is that a deal? Yeah. Well, I was going to have poached egg on toast for me tea, but I think I'll have a takeaway after that. Are you sure you're not hungry? Um, I might be able to force a prawn curry down my throat. Oh, you pig. <laughs> Mavis? Oh, oh, Mavis, I thought we agreed that mud stays out of the house. Oh, Derek, please. I've just had a very unnerving experience. Unnerving? Why? What happened? Well, I know you'll think I'm silly, but I could swear somebody's been following me. Oh, no. Who? 
I couldn't actually see anyone, but I could hear footsteps, and every time I turned round, they stopped. Well, there's nobody there now. Are you sure you weren't imagining it? Derek, I'm serious. They got so close at one point, I had to break into a trot. Well, look, you wait here. I'll go outside and check. <laughs> oh! Well, if there was anyone, they're not there now. Are you sure? Positive. The street's deserted. Oh, you don't think I'm being silly, do you? No. Of course not. Oh, do you know, I got so scared I nearly banged on Rita's door. Well, I'd have looked very foolish if I had, wouldn't I? No need to tell her, or anyone else for that matter. It's all over now. Oh, yes. So, I'll stand at the gate and watch. You can walk Mitzi down the street and drop her off at Rita's. And then we'll both be happy. All right, Jim. Got a piece of news that might interest you. Oh, I. Yeah, got back from work. Our Collins left a note. It's gone back home. What, the Hartley Aye. Oh, well. Yeah, brought a smile on my face as well, I can tell you. Is he gone for good then, or what? Well, I don't know. I hope so. Well, that is interesting news. Cheers, does he? Clears the decks for both of us now, then, eh? Hmm. Still friends. No, it wasn't me who slammed the door on an offer of help. Oh, sorry. Things have been a bit fraught lately. Anyway, at least the pressure's off now. Alf Roberts has given me my old job back. Oh, that is good news. That's really good. Oh, well, at least that should help to improve things between you and Tracy. Oh, I hope you're right. Well, she knows she's got to get on with you in the end, so what other cards can she play? moments. Uh, look, listen, I've come here to apologise. About lunchtime. I realised that was pushing me luck a wee bit, you know. And what's this you're doing now? Your man's away, isn't he? I spoke to Desi and the Rovers. So, what difference does it make? Well, he was the one who was standing between us, Liz, wasn't he? Jim, we split up long before Colin came along. Our problems don't go away just because he has. Yeah, but... Uh, over it last night, is it? Last night was last night. It doesn't mean we go rushing back together again. And it doesn't mean you can come round here at closing expecting to stop the night. Hey, no, come on. That's not why I'm here, love. No? I'm sorry. I don't mean to sound so hard. I'm so very confused. I don't know where we go from here. Yeah, well, uh, at least I can hope. Jim, I need time, not pressure. As far as I'm concerned, we have no claim on each other apart from the boys. Let's just leave it like that, shall we? Bishop? It's only me, Mr. Sugden. Sorry if I've woken you. No, I've not been asleep. I've been waiting for you to come in. You've not been at that wedding till this time, have you? Yes, it, it went on rather longer than I expected. You have to be a bit firmer, you know. You can't let yourself get roped into doing these things you don't want to. Oh, but I did want to. Hey? <laughs> Are you all right, Mr. Bishop? Perfectly. I've had a lovely time. Most of it was Bernard. Who? 
Bernard Morton, the vicar. Him that preached that sermon? Yes, he's a delightful man. Anyway, I won't keep you up. I must get off to bed myself. Good night, Mr. Sugden. Pleasant dreams.